Um, let's uh, let's race right ahead to the superintendent updates. Sure. I'm sure there's been a lot of dramatic changes. For the short time that I've been back, there's been a few. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to everybody to welcome Mr. Kevin Bernardo. He's our minute secretary. Newly acquired. Oh, Kevin, awesome. how are you? Welcome on. So much. Oh, I, know. <laughs> I would just ask if I know everybody else's name's here. If you spoke, I just uh, yeah. so I have it for the record. Thank you. Yep. Very good. Sorry, well, I don't have a card oh, here. <laughs> <laughs> My name's on paper right here. <laughs> so, for now. You, you, got got a you don't either. <laughs> Somebody stole we didn't, my. We didn't, somebody we, is we didn't budget here it. in TV land. We didn't budget it. Impersonating me. <laughs> <laughs> I had one. Bernie took it. I probably did. It's, it's over in Walpole. Yeah, I'm not Steve. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he could yeah. be. Oh, oh my God. It could be. It might be a good thing. That's true. This is, the, so much. this is the informal version of the water sewer meeting for those in TV land. We're, we're not going to get formal tonight. This is just how we go. All right, we're going to start off with uh, some unfortunate news. There's a work stoppage at Wheaton College based on limitations of markouts because we are not allowed to mark on private property due to liability issues, as is the same follows for Dig Safe and the independent contractors that work for them. I would like to ask the board's permission to assist with the markouts based on knowledge that I personally have and a few others in the department have, the only concern falls with the liability. Yeah. Could we draft a letter, if we would agree to signing it, that would release us from liabilities for marking on private property, whereas it has not been done in the past? Because yeah. there is a wide range of utilities in the ground, so the potential is yeah. great that you may have a missed mark or off by a little bit. Yeah. Um, we have very few plans, and it's been right. brought to my attention that they do not have plans, or no, the ones they have have been lost. The campus is I, very, very yeah. riddled with utilities and very old as well. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. I, it's, I don't, it's a tricky situation. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, well, we go ahead. Ahead. so uh, at this point, um, the contractor has a private utility location company coming out. His biggest issue was he, um, he expects to get paid for any costs to hire somebody to mark utilities. His job is to call Dig Safe, notify all the property owners. Yeah. Um, I don't know what the cost is going to be in the grand scheme of the project. It's not, it's not a big number when you're talking about construction numbers. How does Dig Safe cost you any money? Dig Safe it's doesn't. Not, no. But, why, why, but why, won't, why, why and can't they private, mark, private, even if it's on private? They why won't, can't, they won't, they won't, Dig Safe won't go on private property. So if you're a private contractor and if you dig in on private property, they won't dig, they won't, you don't even have to call them? I don't get that. That's not true. Yeah. All right, as a private contractor myself, you call them and you pre-mark and they right. lay it out. This is a situation, probably a specific situation, where Dig Safe has a, probably a long-standing issue of not my problem. Okay, yeah, I get that. <laughs> so yeah. um, I saw the emails back and forth about um, the work stoppage, and it's unfortunate. Um, is there a way um, for us to go out and... I, I don't know <coughs> that the independent marking company is going to be as good as you guys because you have you've been there you know you've done the stuff. Um, You're talking about marking everything? No, just no. just what just we, what we just, know. Just, just the water, water, the fire. Right. Right. I don't know. We still need a private company yeah. 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 to I mean, do the. Do we know what the we know? what we need is the is the electric? Right. That's the electric. really what everybody's concerned about, mm -hmm. rightfully so. Is the yeah. Power. And we know well, it's all. There's gas there. There's electric. Gas there. marked. All right. So, so it's not everybody it's did not mark, but a lot of the. All right. Basically, you know, the water is one. That, I give you. That, that we. I give you friends. That we have done our best. Water marker. At this point, but nobody really knows. So. So. Bishop will go the risk people. with the water is obviously if they they hit, which they did last time when we were on the yeah. other side, we hit it three all or right. four times. We will mark it, and we will still hit it. Yeah, but it at least it'll. Yeah, you'll it, know where it's going to be. At this point, you know, we did everything we did last time. We were doing test pits on Monday, and they like we Monday, raised Monday? concern this past Monday. Mm -hmm. We started with right. test pits, and yep. they were going to start sewer this coming Monday, and they got concerned that yep. you know, although you called in the dig safe, you notified all the private utilities, including Wheaton, still nobody has marked 
the yeah. electric out here. Part of the test pits, you know, we have them on our plans from all the plans that Wheaton provided. Yeah. We have a pretty good idea of where the main stuff is. We know we don't know where everything is, and we're never going to. No, no one's going to no, find right. anything. It's we, right. So it's, it's all part of the purpose stuff. of the test pits was to further identify, yeah. you know, test pits you're not tearing through and making mm -hmm. progress. You're digging slow and trying to find out what's there. Yep. They got concerned that there were no Contract marks on the ground. Or Wheaton. Wheaton, Wheaton got concerned. And then, you know, I think the contractor in the end got a little bit concerned with Wheaton saying, there's power all over here, we don't know where it is. And he's like, well, all right. I, is it direct place. berry or is it in Pumping? It's in Conduit? some of it, none of the main, the primary That's in is not direct berry. That will be in Conduit. Okay. There, I'm sure, are some wires coming across the road to okay. serve a building. Um, that whether they'll find those or not, I don't know. Through, through markups, I measure you know. a cup of coffee. They find them. They'll find one them. Way. The contractor will find. <laughs> no, them. I know contractor what? will find. So them. the only thing that's different Absolutely. from last time is they just they panicked this time and said no. Let's. So last time who stopped we did, work? So Wheaton. Wheaton. Wheaton did. issued stop they, work. They said work. you know what we're not comfortable and I get it. I get it. the power is a big deal, you know. And I I think the first test pit they did. They found the electric line on the side, not really close primary, to where we thought it was the primary, primary in conduit. Primary in conduit. That's kind of cool. Along the side. So now they know where it is, yep. which was one of the reasons yep. for doing the test pits, but they didn't like the fact that nobody had even come out and tried to mock it up. Yep. So we've walked the site, we have maps, Ever so everyone's looked National at Grid, it, said nobody, we think it's here, nobody but nobody comes. will put paint on the ground. Nobody's painting it because nobody's taking yeah, that light. It's 2019. You know, nobody makes a decision. So if we mark out our stuff, the water that we know, yeah, um, and it, can we hire an independent contractor because we're not going to know where the electric is, I and mean, we could probably put a trace on it. But so I the know contractor's got somebody coming out tomorrow to do that. Yeah. Ground penetrating radar company okay. that's going to come out. Oh my goodness! And yeah. give them a price to <laughs> to <laughs> locate it. Well, the, the question is, why does that fall on us? Right. As they should be supplying. It gets. The information as it's their property it's their yep. property it's your you took an easement and it's to do a project so they gave you an e and i'm not trying i'm mm -hmm. just saying where they're coming from mm -hmm. and that's why we get in we fell into this gray area last time yep. we we got through there we got the work done we in broke the, some eggs in there the, was never uh, anything dangerous we yeah. broke some water mains right we had to fix them it was no water is not a big deal but water with an unknown electricity like sidecar right. is a bit of a problem right. mm -hmm. so that's the you biggest know. thing is just getting a, someone to trace or identify how far in those electrical conduits come that, that yeah. we have a pretty good idea where where they are it's just nobody's market. so I, that would be the quickest way wouldn't it would satisfy them, uh, Wheaton, because they'll just drag this out. I'm assuming. Yeah. Because everybody's so, so on if we get that page right now, that's Joe Electric it. down and we're we'll getting the electric. Mark. That's all they care about. Yeah, get the yeah. electric marked. That's what we're doing. And I mean, if you guys, um, I would give a like. I think you're headed towards Frank is a, a letter of disclaimer that this is all private and well, well, well before us as far as installation, elevation, gate valves, mm -hmm. any sizes. This is where we, what are you gonna do? Go in and divide and measure out what you've seen before and just... Basically using some of the old plans and do a, a quick overlay of plans and upgrades that yeah. have been done. Give it your best. Give it our best shot, yeah. line up with what we have there, you know. Um, Give it what we got just right. to, to help you, you out. You kind of have to do that. We're, we're going to work with them. and uh, That's what we did last time. Yeah, I guess we don't, um, we, don't, we don't fight with Wheaton, but I'd sure like to split it because what they're, they're gaining is not only a new road in that area, they're gaining so, knowledge of where their utilities finally they, are. They You're have, welcome. They have not said they won't pay for the private utility right. company. They won't hire the private company. Utility yeah. company. They want someone else to coordinate it yep. and tell them where sure. the work is going. Yeah, but phone calls. Whether a lot it's of work, a split, they haven't <laughs> said they'd pay for the whole thing. They haven't said they won't pay for any of it. Right. They said we'll talk about yeah. the cost of it, but because we're not know, comfortable until. Yeah, you, you know there are there are things there. that are going to come up that are going to be areas of disagreement. Yeah. Let's just throw this into that and get everything moving. Yeah. So well, we yeah. have directed bring, the contractor the, to move forward. You know, he sent a letter. Yeah, that I've I, copied I see, you. Yeah, they basically said, "Listen, we'll do this, but we want." We want you to tell us to do this and that you're going to pay us yep. for whatever the cost of the say, company is to do the markup. 
price. Please proceed. And they're going to yeah, find yeah, out absolutely. what the cost is. Yeah. And then tell us what it is. Get us off that property so yeah. we can move forward. Yeah. No, November's coming. The yeah. roads are going to close. School's well, opening. School's going to be a yeah. Yeah. Enter, right. You didn't think we were going to put a shovel in the ground and just go, did you? <laughs> this project? <laughs> I was hoping. <laughs> but um, that's that's all we can do. Um, we're, we're getting there. Progress it's critical to us. Uh, it's, it's, a really, it's a really good um, place to start. We have um, existing... A uh, live station at Wheaton already. Yeah. We like you said we broke some eggs last time. We all still seem to talk to each other, so we're just going to take that good background and we're going to move merrily ahead. Light up the ground radar, mock mock yeah, the stuff. Just, yeah. Yell up. They had. A, I think like we did everything the same way we did it last time. Yeah. It's just this time the side there wasn't as much on the other side of Fillmore. They don't have like we're near the science center. Um, a lot of their buildings and their real infrastructure is on this side of campus. Gotcha. So that's why they got wigged out all of a sudden. Hey, They're like, understand. Well, where's the marks? We don't, you know, and we can we don't, argue we don't all wanna, day about what well, we don't want to mark them. He should have marked we them. Hurt, mark we don't want to hurt any people. No, that's the bottom Workers, line. That's the bottom students, line. employees over there. We don't want to shut off a building. Yeah. All that just seems silly. Yeah. Do the best job we can to mark so out. So we're going to go a little further than what we initially did. Light it up. And get and we'll go. Yep. Okay, so that's right. you can get me a contact. I can draft a letter to see if they will agree. Well, yeah, it would be okay. um, John Sullivan, okay. and I can forward it. Yeah, All right. just so I have his email. Yep. And I, I probably want to say stop short of a hold harmless agreement. You know what I mean? I don't want to get Copeman and Page and yeah. any of this. I just want to say once upon a time, scaring them off. We kind of we kind of know what we've done out there, and we know some of what we have, and. So the really, concern, you're going to clip a pipe, you're going to clip a water main, and right. they're going to fix it. Right. That, that's that's the long and the short of it. It's, it's not and then, catastrophic. And then there'll be a change order, and yeah. then we'll deal with it. Right. right. Are your concerns, from a liability perspective, you're worried about the big, A, somebody gets hurt, obviously. Right. Heaven forbid you mark something, mm -hmm. and it's, it's wrong, right. they hit it, and then there are injuries. Mm -hmm. But, you know, in terms of... You know what happened last time we went back and forth with Wheaton, but in the end, it's it's not that exact a science, especially in that situation. Um, none of us in the past 15 years or 30 years or 40 years have laid any water main over there, right. other than on the other side, um, just for that the the utilities, and it wasn't even water really, right? It was gas and sewer on the other side. Yeah. So you know, in your area, nobody's been there for a good long for time. For some time. Yeah. So. I mean, I've hit unmarked utilities, sure. and well, it happens all the time. I, I don't freak out at anybody but myself for not hand digging. Right. They know how to expose, you know, go in and mm -hmm. see what's there. So, do your do your level best to mark it out. Mm -hmm. um, send them a once upon a time. We're going to give it our best effort to act accurately locate what we believe this to be with the existing information mm -hmm. and. Go. Yeah, I mean, if we, we at least get some marks down where we believe it is, on based on our knowledge and based on our yeah. plans. You know, if they come back with the scan device or whatever they use, right. and it comes directly on top of it, oh, now there's a concern there that well, maybe one of the utilities is crossing. Yep. You, you might have a branch sitting side beside it, and you don't sure. even, you can't even trace it. And it's just there's multiple things in the ground that that, that are big concerns. Oh, yeah. Obviously, the electric is a top concern. You know, but the steam pipes, the gas pipes, the water pipes, uh, this. It's, yep. it's endless. It's, it's an old place with a lot of utilities. Yep, right. so and obviously, it, it goes without saying, but whatever you guys have um, on hand for the water department, if you can support them, and they do a you know a, a you know the swap for this this right. band aid or whatever you have that well, we they don't have on site. You know what I mean? I, I yeah. know you do that anyway, but just yeah. Yeah, to, we, we to get things to get things moving is. Right. If, we, if you can make one day now, it's like a week in November oh, or December yeah, exactly. when the weather turns. Yeah. So we really, we really got to get the stop work off and the shovels in the ground. Right. Ground penetrating radar. <laughs> I think that's just the name of it. Yeah. No, we, we've done them for um, oil tanks. Yeah. You can always find an oil tank or two with a little bit of radar. So I'm meeting out there tomorrow at two. I saw that. Yeah, I, I think I am available at two. Yeah. I, I did see that and come we, through. We'll right. I'm just to uh, maybe even pass so we'll a letter off then or something. Yeah, just talk to him, and explain the situation. Yeah. So. All right. All right. Jumping off onto a few other things. We got a couple minutes. Uh, the Home Street Water Main Replacement Project. We're looking to 
get that out to bid possibly let's see where to go uh, we'd like to have a bid opening August 7th or 8th here um, to do this we have to list it on combines which Rose was able to list the sewer project on there last time for us um, we would need to notify the central register by this Thursday to have it advertised for next Wednesday's register is that is there any opposition for that time frame of going out to bid? I, I, I mean, would say probably bid it. As a contractor, I mean, you yep. would know when people are starting to fall off and you may have some availabilities yep. at the end of the season like that. Right. No, that's a small enough project <coughs> so somebody could, could catch this season, I right. think. That, that's kind of the goal. Yep. All right. uh, we quickly had a meeting today, quickly, three hours, uh, about the, uh, <laughs> the master Fran's plan. It was fall. <laughs> So it always, I'm going to review the plan that was proposed. Also, the guys in the department to go over. We're going to probably shuffle a few of the projects around based on the length of time that it's going to take and cost for each individual project. There's a few that are on there that definitely need some attention, but the cost is something that has to be looked at. So that may get, you know, kind of pushed down right. the line a little bit with everything else that's going on right now. Uh, once that's done, I'm going to get that back to uh, Western and Sampson. They'll come here with the final draft. The ballpark number on that for the, I believe it was a 20 year improvement, was based on an average of about $2 million for an annual cost. Over for the pipe. Time. Just pipe. Right. Um, just water. Water. It's good. Yeah, just water pipe. Yeah. I like it. So, again, it'll be something that'll be, uh, be tweaked and worked with a little bit, picking certain areas that are problem areas to hit them, hit them first. And uh, if there's any mains that we can leave in the ground and either clean and reline, right? Um, or possibly there's one problem area which is Old Taunton Ave. It has the old trolley tracks and concrete underneath the pavement. The cost to remove that right. is more substantial, I think, than replacing the main. That's that's an eight inch that goes to a six at one point. Okay. So there may be some exploratory work done there to see if we can possibly upgrade the six inch to an eight inch depending on where it transitions and yep. possibly and then line, line, that, line that pipe and yep. leave that in place. The flow we, I was told will be adequate and I think the cost savings there would be immense compared to having to do that removal of that concrete and, and trolley tracks. But I think well, we could always hire Grant Brothers to do that. I'm sure they have a machine large enough. We'll, we'll Direc we'll shred directional drilling. <laughs> <laughs> we'll shred the trolley tracks. Right. So the important thing on the master plan is when we see the results of the rate study, if that two million a year makes the rate right. something you don't like, then we're going to have to go back and we'll reassess right. that. We'll have to tweak everything, yeah, yeah. yeah. sure. Right. Prioritize. Yeah, lower that, extend it, do something. Yeah. We'll, yep. we'll figure it out. A uh, couple more things. Um, lead and copper samples have finally all been completed. We had a delay in retrieving some of the samples as we expected, as we've always in the past. Yep. Um, right. We actually had to get DEP approval <laughs> to take non-approved sites as our samples, and we'll have to go back at a later date to do an in-house inspection to make sure it meets the criteria. We based it on age of the property, as that's how they pick their sample sites in the beginning. Okay. So we found some homes that were in the same area, same age, you know, we can hope that the plumbing inside is basically intact. Looking at the exterior, that's how we determined which sites to use. And uh, the results came back, and they seem to be on track with everything else that was sampled previously. Uh, a lot of people are just refusing to do them. Right. They were, uh, they're writing some, some nasty letters back to the town, take me off the list, X, 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 X. And okay. sometimes you don't see the bottle, or you see it in the woods. And, you know, sometimes you talk to the people, and they just want no part of it. Um, so it's something I've been... On contact with DEP, we're going to see if we can get multiple additional sites. Yeah. Uh, the, the concern is that they want to have Has certain been, houses sampled. What's the number? Has it been dropped from the 60 to the 30 yet, or are you still at 60? It has exactly. not, and it will not be dropped because of the treatment plant going online. Uh, Any right, change yeah, to the system. scrutiny. Okay. So it will remain oh. at our high yeah, number. Yeah, scrutiny is going to be required. The plant. I think it's going to be based on results. So with with us boosting the pH up as high as we are, I mean it's we should we should see better results. Well, according to DEP, right. we should see we are, better results. Yes and no. Well, no, well, I'm just saying in theory. In, exactly. in theory, what they're mm -hmm. thinking. Right. And and, and we it, know that it's just not working that way. Right. Um, we show a plenty of track record to show that. 
and possibly at some point we can have a, a chemical analysis done and have somebody smarter than I look at it and present the reasons why we'd like to lower the pH, why it worked back then and show our track record that we had then. Right. Uh, just, you know, a little trial and error is, is what's going on here and it's unfortunate that we suffer with the, the water quality. Yeah. But, um, so those are in, those uh, notifications will be get, getting sent out, so we should make our 30-day window of notification as we did not last year because of the same exact problem. Right. Um, lastly, the manganese samples came back in, expected, they're high. Um, they are over the action level that's set by Boston DEP, so we will be required to do another public notification <coughs> just to let people know that certain source points were above that action level. Again, obviously, this is the reason why we're putting the treatment plant in. Yep. And we can only hope that uh, when the plant goes online or shortly thereafter with additional main cleaning and flushing that we can see these numbers come back down from the sources. Yep. And we'll go from there. I think that might bring us up to Bob. You got it. Thanks, Frank. No problem. Mr. Salvo. You want to see, Bob? Huh? <laughs> Um, what do you guys have for us tonight? Why not? I'll let Jeremiah talk. Jeremiah Falvey from the North Cottage Program, Executive Director over there. Thanks for uh, inviting us over. Bob was um, planning a few weeks ago to be here, and then something old business popped up that um, prevented the, the request from going in. But, our plan is to install the sprinklers in the main building, in the annex building, the two original buildings. Right. Still on the property. Uh, and the first step is to go with you folks. Yeah, we want to tie in and split off to two buildings to save the tie-in fee. Um, three gates, isolated. Diagrams. Did you guys give any diagrams or anything to no, Frank? No, we we're asking permission, but we can submit a diagram. Um, yeah. Not sure about what the size of the pipe's going to require, and there's a six inch main out there. Right. We're not sure what you know the flow test is going to come back at. Yeah. Being, I would say no more than a six, but no, I would say no less than a six, but we're not sure. I mean, right. So. I think we kicked this around um, a couple of meetings ago and came up with the um, one building, one one tap. That's that's pretty much what we've been doing, and we're going to stick with that. I think is is that what I that's understood what I mean. from you two? Yeah. So, in addition to that, if it's possible to do a tap for each building and loop them, and again, um, I know it's. It's, it's a lot, but um, I want you to understand that the deadhead individual taps just have that bacteria in that dead water line challenging us to maintain our water quality. So if, if we could loop them and add a couple of gate valves, it gives us the advantage of moving water through that otherwise stagnant pipes. That's, um, so with the, with the loop, there would be a continuous flow or some kind of. We can we can we can monitor that during flushing or alter that during flushing mm -hmm. and um, give you the fire suppression protection that you need and um, give us water movement and mm -hmm. cleansing and activity and action through the lines that we need for um, water quality. So what difference would that make, or if any, to the tie-ins, where it's still required two separate It's two, tie -ins. right, it's two. And I'm just saying in addition to that, um, if it is possible in the design to just loop them together, if it's, you know... Well, uh, just, I, we just allowed this to happen from one building to the next, 2013, we tapped up the six-inch main and brought it to the next building. I don't know what's something that's changed since then, or what's the... Uh, I don't... The, uh, I don't remember that coming in front of us. If if somebody else um, let that slip through, I guess um, that so be that. But uh, we're pretty much on um, one building, one tap. It's, uh, hmm. Are you referring to the map? The map from the correct. Mm -hmm. hmm. Mr. 
Mr. Fournier here? Nobody is. Thank you. Jeremiah, we spoke to Jeremiah, how you doing? Uh, you had a few questions on that, mm -hmm. permitting for that. Right, right. Um, what I've been able to find out, I know we have the plans mm -hmm. at the program at North Cottage, um, but finding those that only show that we had them. Um, I enlisted Chris Carmichael to help out with that. Uh, he gave me permission to look through it, have his, his uh, assistant over there help me with that. Uh, she tracked down the permits for those, the two separate plans, separate permits for the two buildings, 75 and a half mm -hmm. and 75. This is the McNeil property down back. Right. Way back to Dr. Dipmore's property. Um, the permits were issued separately. Um, one was more specific, they did mention uh, sprinklers, but the other one uh, attached to the plans. Um, they were both issued not as 75 and 75 and a half. They were both issued as 75. They filed with the town at 75, and they still have those on them. I've seen them. Um, it's, it's, it's clear that they're separate buildings, separate plans. Um, and, and that's for the four inch that goes to 75 and a half, and the two that goes to 75? Is that the correct address is now, or? 75 is the smaller building, 75 and a half is the largest split level building. Okay. Uh, and those are domestic? That's domestic, 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 domestic water, or what is it? What is the sprinklers? The sprinklers, sprinklers okay. The sprinklers. Um, but they both filed with the town under 75 and a half. Okay. Permits were issued but at one address. And at 75 and a half, that was the one that was based with the outstanding amount that we had talked about, right? Um, well, is, is that, Bob, you can help me out with that. So the, the outstanding fee that, mm -hmm. that was brought up. So basically there was a meeting. I was at the meeting and this took place about what we wanted to do move forward with Larry Schneider, Barry Marshall, myself. And they asked if we could tie into the six-inch man that was behind the building. They were in it to the same guy on our profit. Oh, yeah, right. And he said, yeah, you need a PID valve here and another one the other door. So we did both. We had an underwater tap it, put a tap and tee and from behind the building to 75 bar. That was it. It was verbal, I don't, see any, I don't remember anything being in writing, but there was a conversation and being present in 2013. 2013. So what came after that? Um, Larry did go to, uh, met with the board back in 2013. Uh, at the time, they were setting new fees, tie-in fees, uh, and it was suggested that we go ahead with the project. And because the new fee they believed would benefit North Cottage, be to our advantage to wait. Um, go ahead with the project and in the meantime they would establish the fees. Right. Three years later, we got built for $31,750. $31, I think it was the shock of opening it after three years. Uh, and again, as Bob said, the understanding, Larry's understanding, that there would not be a fee for a tie-in because it was our property to our property. Well, just listening to you, I, I think we've, we've already hit a contradiction. It was the fee would be later. The fee would come later because I, I was at I, I was at those meetings. That was the town's position. Yes. Yeah, and what what I think um, again, it's 2013. This is 2019. That was some time ago. We've had many meetings, but um, what I think the intent was, um, as we've revamped the sprinkler fees to a um, more reasonable annual fee. Um, it would it would benefit you. How it, it jumps to a an invoice um, seems like um, I'm not sure how that happened, but go ahead. So, so um, you did expect a bill. I mean, we we talked about there, there would be there would be a bill later. Yeah, but I thought the fees they were talking about was the 
square footage fees that <coughs> we have to all pay buildings we're paying. I didn't <coughs> believe it was a tie-in fee. We just come up with a square footage fee for both 75 and 75 hours. That's what we're supposed to be kept with. I just find it hard to sit here and talk about something that happened in 2013. And from there till today, that being in business as I am myself, to let something go this long without revisiting an invoice to somebody, or calling them or addressing it, not when we come to do a new project and this all of a sudden comes out on the table. I have a hard time swallowing that right now because of the, all the years past, you know, if there was something that was supposed to be paid for, it should have been taken care of. 2013, not 2019. And I don't know whose fault it is, Luke, and I'm not sitting here pointing fingers at anybody, but I just think it's very hard for me to swallow. I would not be able to get away with it in my own personal business of saying, hey, I forgot to do this and back in such and such a day, hey, can you pay me? Yeah, you know? I know I, I get, the, I get the, the private sector and honestly it, it, it runs differently. And what, what we were trying to do, again, because I sat in on those meetings was because we actually, I mean, not that it matters, but we, we endorse and support what North Cottage does. Um, it's, a, it's a great place. Um, you do good work. Thank you. And uh, we tried to assist the project, the property, and the process by saying we are in the process of revamping our regs, which took some time. Um, the, the responsibilities on the board, I was on, well, I was on board at the time, we had a lot of irons in the fire, and I take partial responsibility for that, hands down. But um, however, however it came out, um, the bill is the bill, and we'll, we'll have to look at what's that. I, I haven't gotten to the bottom of that. Um, been tied up on a million other things. But um, again, my, my bottom line is we discussed a billing at some future time when our regs were changed, and that happened. However that happened, I, I, you know, we'll get to that. But um, don't be offended. We're not singling you out. I, I, we I'm tried not, to, we I'm tried. Offended. I just don't think it's, I, don't, I just don't think it's yeah, fair but, to but, them, not but, me. I'm, no, I'm, this has nothing to do no, with me. I'm with you. It's just that the outlook of what I'm saying, yep. moving down the road in the future, no, I right. just don't feel this, this is appropriate no, it, to do to somebody six years later. Right. It, will, it would be difficult to repeat this because <laughs> our regs and our sprinkler fees have been ironed out. So they were in a transitional time, and again, because you hit us at, at that perfect moment with um, a project and a, a property that we fully support, we said, you know, in all frankness, we, we can't come up with it. We shouldn't come up with a number now because it, it might not be fair to you guys. It might help you out to wait. That's all. So just, so given that, and, yep. and I'm not disputing that at all, but because Larry had a different understanding, a different belief of sure. his agreement, or his understanding of the agreement, um, what the result of waiting would mean. Um, he consulted an attorney. Back at review for a while. Ultimately, they said it could go either way. Said the town's um, side had merit, as did we. Said we had one understanding of something, so they, they said, we can't say this is an invalid bill. At the same time, we're not telling you to pay it. So that's where we were, and that was in 2017. We got the response back from the attorney September 2017. And then Larry was diagnosed that two weeks before that. So as you can imagine, a lot of things changed. Larry died in December of that year. I took over around that time, first as in the acting position, then in January permanently. And for several board meetings, the issue kept resurfacing the $31,750. Now, in anticipation of hopefully one day sprinklers and expansion for our graduate house, I anticipated this being a potential impediment, so I wanted to get in front of it. I consulted the board July 11th. I got the board's approval to pay the $31,750, and I contacted this office and was told that it was no longer, it was not a fee that we owed. We were up to date. There was no balance to our account. So even if you decide that we still owe that fee, I hope to have it put on the record that Larry was committed to paying our bills. We didn't, we didn't ignore a bill. Right. 
And a year ago, I approached this office with the offer to pay the fee. Right. And was told it was no longer a fee, it was not owed to the town. I reported back to the board within a few months and told them the good news. It's gone. It was a one-time time fee, <coughs> no more. <coughs> Subsequently, so we have what happened in the meantime. Chris Carmichael did an inspection. Very concerned about the lack of sprinklers. As for the last 47 <coughs> years in town, every fire chief, Burgess and whoever was before him, uh, Weatherell, I think before that, was concerned, yeah. right? Um, and he required us to do a chapter 34 review. In the meantime, we found that we were in, in a position to afford. Told Chris about that, went to the board, got the approval for the fire for these sprinklers from the board. Again, didn't expect any of this was still going to be in our way. And that brings us up just a few weeks ago when we approached the board about the permit to tie into the water line. And the thirty-one thousand seven hundred fifty right. dollars popped up again. Yep, we're living Groundhog Day. I, uh, I will apologize for the inconsistency, and uh, I don't have an answer at this at this moment. Um, and and then I'll also say, Larry may not have always paid the bills happily, but he paid. Them. Right. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, and, it's and that's it's, important. It's right. important for me. You know, to, to establish that, that we did make the approach. We weren't trying to not pay something. It was, it was. Right. No, it was, um, I, I remember how it started. And um, some of the confusion does lie on us by saying, we don't have a, a defined sprinkler program for you today. Unless, you know, back in 2013, unless you want to pay the preventative one, is what I'll call it, I guess. So, um. Let us, um, if you don't mind, I want to table this one more time. In the interim, I promise to get to the bottom of it and come up with some some sort of solution. I, I don't know what that will be. So may I ask this, and, and um, I'd ask you to at least consider, you know, some relief as far as the fees uh, for the tie-in. Uh, I'm not asking that we get something for nothing. Uh, as you know, and I've had informal discussions with some people uh, in town and um, at the town hall about in the future, a tie-in to our sewer line that goes right. from North Cottage down to the um, the walking trail, right. the bump in the road. Uh, if at some point the town was still interested in doing that, which Larry made a commitment early on, he he designed the project to accommodate the town should they ever want to do that. Right. I have that in writing. I let it a push from several years ago that he made a point of doing that. What happened after that, I don't know, but I got the letter. Right. So that was always our intention to do that with the town, to be available for that. Um, I'd ask you at the very least, we're not asking for something for nothing, but if the town was still interested in tie into our sewer line from North Cottage down the street for the town buildings, we'd be happy to do that. Is that a, is that a, um, a low pressure line, a high pressure? It's a low pressure, okay. so we can tie into that? I think this is something that has to be done very quickly. We usually start this project hopefully this fall or the spring. Right. We want to, you know, we want to get it across the road. Right. Whether they tie in or whatever, but we need to right. get it across the road. Yep. You know. No, I'm talking by our next meeting in two weeks. It's it's gone long mm -hmm. enough. I, I do whatever happens, I do apologize for the, the inconsistency <laughs> and the, the dragging out that when when we finalized our regs, we should have we should have brought three, probably four customers in and said this is what we're doing, but we didn't. Yeah, and, uh, and we now we now have another bite at the apple, and we can fix this. Well, and I just hope that the board would, at the very least, weigh that out. Is our tie-in to the water line for the sprinklers, which is to the benefit of not just our residents, but the fire department. I mean, this is something that benefits the town too. Uh, but the value of that tie-in, I hope you think, is at least equal to the value for the town to tie into the sewer. Um, we spent a million dollars on that project. But again, we're not asking for something. Right, no, I understand that. I I get that the um and we don't if if we were to run a sewer line, um, another sewer line down to the the interceptor there at the, the bump in the road, um, parallel sewer lines are bad engineering, it would be 
obvious to use the line that is existing. We've got the line. Yeah. We've got the line. <clears throat> All right. I think um, I think we have the facts we need, and uh, again, I, I will apologize for the the lack of focus and energy on the six years that it's taken to get to this. But we this is going to be this this will be done next meeting. If, if you don't mind coming back, if you, you don't have to come back, if you don't want to, we'll send you a decision. I'll be happy to come back. Okay. Well, we were trying, but you know, nobody has time. <laughs> That's not fair. <laughs> the last time I had pizza was November of last year. So at least going to executive session. Yeah. Yeah. See, so all right. Pizza see, you've been here before. Pizza's good, right? See? Yeah, exactly. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks, man. Good to see you. Thank you very much. Take it easy. Thank you. explain I had multiple conversations with him um, and we questioned how he could call and ask you know is there any outstanding bill for such and such an address yeah and I believe it was the way that the question was asked it was directed towards Rose oh, she yeah, was okay. here at the time yep. when you pull up a specific account right. in the data national program yep. it shows you the water bill and sewer if there is any sewer for that property if there's an outstanding number, it's at the bottom of the screen. Right. It doesn't have anything to do with sprinkler tie-in fees, with tapping fees, anything above and beyond. No, it's it's micro. It's not mm -hmm. macro. It's not um, mm -hmm. permits. Right. It's not. Um, yep. So you I know, can understand application. Right. It's not, nothing. Nothing. Nothing, uh, nothing other than the about. ongoing bills in use. That's right. what the water bill. Like a, a person who hasn't paid three water bills, they get a late. Mm -hmm. Boom! It trips up. Would be they there. haven't paid their bill. Right. This wasn't that situation. This was a big picture fee that did not get billed ever. Right. The only way that if somebody applies for a sprinkler permit fee, that paperwork gets sent in along with the check at that time, then Rose appropriates that bill to that account. Right. Shows that it, she appropriates it, she pays it, it's done. Now that's into there. You can go back and look at that on a separate page, but it's not going to show as being an outstanding bill because right. she hadn't appropriated that bill yet. Yep. So that's, I think, how the different opinion came out. Yep. You know, it, the question was asked a certain way and it was answered that, that way. Right. You know, and even if he would have asked, and he may have asked, and I spoke with him about this, of uh, what wording was used, and obviously it's going back quite a few years. Right. You know, if you would have said, do I have an outstanding sprinkler tie-in fee? Right. You're still not going to be able to find that on the computer screen. Right. That that's something you'd go back and have to look at permits that were filed. So you know. Yeah. Was that fee waived? Would that have been a question? Could it have been? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that um, cause it to look for it and say, okay, it's back here. Yeah. It's the actual fee. That mm -hmm. The only reason that this came about is because Bob approached me about installing the sprinkler into the two buildings that are now required to have sprinklers. So that's when you do digging back into the property. What had happened is the two buildings that were being requested for, the addresses didn't add up to accounts that we had in the computer. Because at some point in time, when they acquired these other two buildings, 75 and a half and 75, one of the newer buildings has two of the same addresses. They're both 69. So if you look at the proposed plans, that's where the numbers changed. 69, 69 and a half was added. <coughs> so he's still getting billed for the correct amount of services the correct size, it's just in our data national program, the address was never changed. So this is how it all started the, the ball rolling when they asked to put sprinkler into a building that didn't have water and we have it listed as it having water. Yep. It's just an address change in the computer that was never updated in our system. So that's the only reason this dirt from the past was brought to the table. Yep. Do we have any more people that are in the same window that not that I am aware of. This is the only one. I believe he is the only one. <laughs> Just trying to think of it. Right. No, <laughs> exactly. Going good. <laughs> right. um, again, that would require probably some, some digging to, yeah. to think of who wasn't um, assessed a fee at the time and may have been granted an extension until the board determined the new rates. And uh, unfortunately, Rose isn't here to, to ask. She may know right off the top of her head if there was any more that were involved or have not paid the associating fee with what size they have. And $31,000, is that the actual cost or is that the penalty for nope, not paying? No, that is just the actual cost. No there were no penalties involved 
Is that the one time sprinkler fee? That is the tapping fee and the annual fee that was in place of that one time fee. That was that huge number that was there originally. Mm -hmm. And then the board changed Change it yep. to be just an annual to, fee. To be an annual yep. fee after you obviously pay your whatever tie in fee is necessary based on flow needed for your, your building. So that's where the, those numbers came from. So those days there was the tapping fee and the sprinkler fee. Yes. And so the sprinkler fee went away because it was a very high one time prohibitive fee. fee right? And that went away and became an annual fee. Correct. Right. Um, that's yep. more palatable that Correct. it would probably take them 20 years to pay an um, annual fee to make up for the one time fee. Right. The way the board worked it, I think. You, you, yep. What was that's that year that changed what happened? 2013, 2014? It was after. It, had it was after. after that, I, was, yeah. I was here then. Because oh, so like I remember talking about that. 2016, something like that. Because we actually, the, the, the commission hired Mark Abrahams to actually yep. go back and come up with the basis for that fee right. um, using, I remember it was really detailed work that he, he put into it to come up with a basis for, uh, and to justify an annual fee as opposed to the annual fee. Um, and I think the annual fee was there. My recollection, anyway, that was really problematic because of concerns about the high cost of even tying in the water uh, for new development. And so rather than doing it that way, it was decided, you know, an annual fee is actually more palatable to the commission, the town, and to the, the so property owner yep. going forward. And that's why the vote was taken to do that, to do away with that, that really significant. And, and it was pretty excessive. And what happened is that those folks that had already paid that one time fee are not charged the annual fee. Right. So it went away, and, um, and they had already paid their dues, and um, so the annual fee was only assessed to those folks that had never paid the fee. That's my recollection. Anyway. And I don't recall any other properties that were in that ballpark. Rose was probably the I, I'm sure she would know if there were any. The only thing I was thinking was possibly the Oasis up uh, Old Colony Road. Mm, right. That was probably right around the same time. But uh, I know they were added. They did have sprinkler added. I don't know what costs and stuff were associated with it. You remember that conversation, Luke, with Bernie and Larry? I wasn't. I must not have been there. Bernie. Um, Bernie may have. Talk to them on his own. Yeah. It's was it a public meeting or it was just a meeting that they had? Could no. could have been just those those guys. The um the public stuff I remember was um Diane was chairman and uh, the discussion was that we were doing other rules and regs issues and sprinklers were kind of like an added extra pain in the butt. So we kind of did everything else and didn't get to sprinklers for a while and we told them. As again, anticipating it would be a better deal on an annual basis to just hang on a minute, and yeah. they slipped through the cracks for a certain period of time, and now they're back. So we have to um, we have to deal with it. Okay, good. <clears throat> and I, again, on the um, the one building, one connection. So two buildings, two connections is still. The way to go out there, and I think we need to be stay consistent. I mean, yeah. I know that that the, the situation that they're talking about, now, you know, piggybacking on on their right. property, but and that's I mean, just not. I don't think that should have been done. Right. No, I yeah, agree. But I mean, that's that's all water under the bridge. But I mean, the two, we need to stay consistent with the two, each, right for each property. One one specific for each property, I should say. Yeah. I mean, Whether it loops or not, I mean that that would be a nice feature. Right. It, I don't. It doesn't sound like it's going to be. It's not, really going to make not possible. Yeah, it, probably not going to be possible. Or is it going to even make a lot of sense? It, will it will it make that much? I mean, I like the looping because it's continuous. You know, you got you got a fire here, and they get, you got, you know, it just for me it makes sense. Looping anything you can, instead of a dead end. Yeah. I think we should. I think we need to stay consistent. Right. No, I think so. And uh, I'm hoping they come to you with a plan, or at least you know something, something on paper that says this is where where we want to go into. And uh, just from I don't know about um, their flow calculations and whatnot, but if you tap off a 16 inch main with one six inch to a building, and then continue on with that six inch 
to another building and God forbid both places or the whole place lights up for some reason, See. you're only working off one six inch line. See, that's, right. that's what I was thinking so, when they talked about the other one. They and changed. so you relax and again, just as a layman, if you if you have a six inch line separated by, I mean a uh, six inch line tap into the 16, separated by 10 or whatever feet into another six inch tap to a 16 inch main loop together to two buildings that are simultaneously requesting fires, it's a huge different flow. Right. The, the dynamics are giant different. So I thought we'll say the same thing. It's not just the water thing anyway. Yeah, yeah. They, I think just, they're they're be, there's, there's a why yeah. for our uh, reasoning, and exactly. I think that's that's the basis of it. And yeah. I, I don't see. Um, I agree with that. I hope it never happens. Yeah, and I'm sure. I'm but sure you have they, to. I'm sure they do too. But yeah. you got to prepare but for it. But it's the yeah. smartest way to plan. So yeah. that's that's what we're that's what we're going on on that. And the other thing I. Um, um, I'll have to have Rose bring all the information up and uh, grab a file and take a, take, take a look at that and how, how we want to proceed with that. You still have minutes back then? I would assume that there's probably some probably on a cassette probably tape somewhere. Right. Yeah, I mean, that's probably what they did. What you did. Right. And that's the other thing. They were, um, I can't say frequent um, attendees, but I do remember a couple of meetings with them and when they got a surprise bill or something then they didn't come back or then then they, they offered to pay it and I, I don't know it's just it's a whole lot of yeah it's a whole lot of misinformation but um, we'll, we'll get it and, and make it make it right um, did you finish your uh, superintendents yes I haven't updated Wow, they're, they're, kind like getting, they're kind of getting short frames. Yeah. Like you're helping me out. I saw like that. Either you're very efficient and you've squared I like the way it was efficient. This, <laughs> this newly permanent <laughs> position, that's what it was. <laughs> you were just working hard as the interim to, to get the knot. Now that you're going to be good. like, all right, all right, I'm, right. I'm here, I'm going <clears> to <throat> Dialing it back. I got you. All right. Or th things are just so smooth now. No, not at all. All right. You're just dealing with a lot of it on your own. Pretty much, yeah. Good work. We're getting along. Um... Are they proceeding with the septic system out at the treatment plant? I did not make the meeting today. I had another meeting with Mr. Unit, so I was unable to attend. Okay. Uh, I believe you I, might I have. Know, but I, okay. I called Jimmy and, and or emailed him and said, oh, everything's a go. Okay. Good. I had heard similar uh, rumblings. I didn't know if it was definite, but mm -hmm. so I guess we're just waiting on the, the contract to begin again. Yeah. Okay. Because I know there was some elevation stuff that had to come up once that septic system was in. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah, Jennifer caught my ear and was reminding us that the retention basins are supposed to be in first on the project to handle stormwater runoff, as is not the case on this project. So for something in the future moving forward, she would like to see that those are in place and stabilized prior to... I wasn't there. <laughs> Don't look at me. Prior to <laughs> you know, more work around the area. I explained to her everything is going in in layers because of the constricted area that is there. Yeah, I guess she understands how things work down there with the, the confines that we are dealing with. So right. Obviously, in a perfect world, it may have gone in in that order. If we had real estate, absolutely, it would be done. Right. But the, so. the famous teardrop or donut hole is really smoking us still and will. Yes. All right. I think it comes, brings us to Weston and Sims. Stop. Which end do we which end do we go from? Water or wastewater, you pick. Water. All right. So um, I sent, I think a couple weeks ago, the general engineering water services contract to Frank. And um, I've got it here for review and potential signature. Um, so the scope of services is really the same. It's meeting assistance, developer project reviews, and then additional water-related services. The rates have increased um, slightly from 0 to $10 an hour, so a couple increased by $5 an hour and a couple by 10 and one by nothing. Um, so it's essentially the same as it was last year for $50,000 for um, services for the year related to water. Last year, or 
the close of fiscal year 19. We did almost use all of that money, mostly because of the interim and, you know, helping you guys out between Bernie and Frank, and we probably did more than I would expect we would do next year. So I wouldn't see using, in previous years, we didn't come close to using it. So I would expect this coming year would be more similar to Good. other years, so. I don't know if you have we need any motion questions. To this? That would be we helpful. May, we may need a motion and I'd like to make a motion to um, approve uh, 2020 drinking water general engineering services from Weston and Sampson as written. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. How many copies? So I need one and you need two. Okay. So we need a total of three. And there's also a little initial place at the very back. At the back. Too. Just, initials. Yeah. Just initials? Initials are fine there, yeah. Yes, sir. Five dollars. I don't know who didn't get a raise. Yeah. <laughs> Do you need copies of stuff? I'll just give that one. Okay. I have a spare of this one too. So That's the document they're signing right I'll wait until you guys are done. We have to buy stamps for you guys. I know. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. So you can't even get permanent names. Stamps. Get the names. Well, you gotta pick one or the other. Wow. <laughs> That's not respectful. Right. One for you. <laughs> working on it. Okay. No guy. I'm telling you. Look at him. Awkward. Keep that one on file. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Thank you. you get two. I'll take one. And next topic is <clears throat> the memorandum of agreement with Massachusetts Historical Commission. Uh, we My made the uh, we awesome. corrected the typo. Um, just so you know, we got a PDF version of this originally from MHC, so hence the typo. We had to convert it, and I'll take full blame for that typo. It was my fault, so... No, we, uh, we, we know that. I know. Good. Well, I just that wanted was, to admit it publicly, you know. We heard the bus backing up that last meeting. <laughs> right over Barbara's foot. Yep, I heard about that. I drove the bus. <laughs> um, so the other change we got information from SRF that they did not want to be a party of this agreement um, and honestly I don't see that they need to be it's really an agreement between the town and MHC so um, I'm guessing that you probably need a, a motion on this for Luke to execute it is that sound correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so he signs this? Yeah. So, oh, okay. Yeah, they had formatted it for just the chair to sign. So if you guys all want to sign, you can do that too. But well, Mr. President, he's <laughs> um, makes a big and <laughs> I would recommend that we have five of these signed, wow. um, just Jeez. so we have enough. Phew. If you're okay with that, there is do only you have five yes, we do. Okay. <laughs> they're they're kind of parsed out between folks. But we need to um, make a motion. You I think, think we need a motion? I think you do this, need a motion, a motion a for this. To accept the um, memor. Okay. Yeah. Well, I would just say the memorandum of agreement okay. between Norton 
and the MHC um, so dated. I'll just, I'll just read it out. Seven nine nineteen. I would very much like to make a motion, not my favorite motion, but one nonetheless, <laughs> to approve the memorandum of agreement between the Massachusetts Historical Commission and the Town of Norton, Massachusetts, for the Norton Water Treatment Plant Project. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Let's do it. Now do we have to do a, a motion for him to execute this, or does he I just execute? Just goes. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, I think you're good. I think that was. Yeah, it was so stuck. It, you okay. got it. Yep, yep. Thank you. So I'm going to get these five copies and send them to MHC so they can execute them. And then once I re get back, I'll request two copies for you guys, um, and then it will be finalized. And they record, and we record, and you record. Who did, did you get five copies? Um, yeah. This is, this is it's, it's not a recording. It's not a recording. It's something that MHC wants to have on file for them. So that they come on. Yeah. Come on, yeah. Okay. Do you have another copy? Yeah, we'll get four. I'm feeling four. I have this one. Oh, no, that was. Um, is that a different one? I did have like seven of them, so. Okay. This one? Yes, right. Okay. Oh, he had two of them. Oh, we got lots. Oh, okay. Then so he can have maybe give Frank or whomever needs the I'll extra <laughs> copy. So, so if I I made seven copies, so there should be two spares. You have one now. So there's your five signs. Okay. Your five assigned okay. right there. So. But Frank doesn't have one now. Okay. Do you want me to scan so it? Okay. Fine. No, I think we're good. All right. So next so item. That's nailed, done, gone. We don't have to talk about this again. Hopefully, <laughs> as long as she <laughs> signs then, it, then Brona, really, you'll be all set. All right. and when they want to show up, got an this, indication. This is seventy-five bucks now for them to show up again. <laughs> we got an indication that they will execute it from the cover letter. So. Always a good thing. We'll be all set with the SRF money and everything now because that was the pulling back, right? Yes. Yeah. Um. The other thing, I'm not sure if you want to discuss, I know you brought it up, I think, at the last meeting, the PFAS voluntary sampling. Do you want to get into that or? Uh, that's a whole other topic. That's a lengthy topic. That's why I, that's fine. Okay. That's I think fine. we're going to go kind of military on this one. Never yeah. volunteer for anything. <laughs> right. I no, just, I, just I agree there are things you can do. You can sample monitoring wells. The EPA is still establishing guidelines, aren't they? Yes. Well, yes. Yeah, they are. That's why they have an assessment. But, but so they, but the easiest thing to do is to not sample all the UCMR samples that you did for round UCMR three, three. Mm -hmm. um, came back so with non-detect. <laughs> oh, I don't want to talk about that. So, so <laughs> therefore, the only issue with that is the detection methods and yeah, the laboratory different, yeah. are were different. So what you might want to do is see if you can request additional information from the lab that took those samples because that's one of the things that DEP recommends. Right, they change the requirements and most labs don't meet the new requirements. Exactly. Right. So that's, I think, all I would recommend right now is for you to do that. And if the lab comes back and gives you information that may mean that you might want to sample, then we can discuss the next mm -hmm. steps. But given that they were all non-detects, I would not expect there to be an issue. Right. Good. So. I mean, that's we're, we're, it for right. they've they've just changed the the sampling testing requirements of what they're looking for into like you know, 20 parts per billion it, yes. it's really ridiculous trillion. Yeah. Trillion. Yeah. Trillion. It's, it's trillion it's incredible yeah. you know that would might it may show up yes anyway and that's trillion. what they're looking yeah. for that's how we'll they're going to send yeah. it that's how you bring it's stuff like, up yeah just, you don't want to eat popcorn before, before you sample <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
popcorn. The yeah. microwave popcorn. Yeah, yeah. 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 it was yeah. awesome. Yeah, you can't wow. use certain perfumes yeah. and colognes and Gore-Tex. Yeah, um, certain yeah. gloves you can't wear. So my high karate is not a good idea. No, I can't even be in the same prep with you anymore. Wow, I found an excuse. <laughs> so that's all I have unless you have questions for me. There's another water issue. Oh, okay. Is oh, place. you have the pay rack. Work. Um, and this month, current payment due is um, a, a pretty big number of $906,269.27. So is it clear where? They yes. sign. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's, it's okay. Back. 906, 269, and 27 cents. The better part of a million bucks. There is a lot of mechanical stuff going on out there. Um, it's it's really taking shape. Um, pretty pretty incredible. I don't know if I go that far, but it's moving. Well, do we need, yeah. Do we need to sign all those? Is that what we have yes. to do? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Well? Yes. There are signatures that are needed. They are talking about extending the schedule based on availability of operators and water. So, oh, that, on our end, yes. So, I think um, they're going to do what they have to do with what they have to do. It. Mm -hmm. um, what's our next? Well, well done. Well, you know sorry. what I mean. <laughs> you can't. You can't bring the water that we don't have no. up to. The plant that you know when's the next well get that's it's on hold because of this that's okay. why we granted that two month okay. no cost extension the last uh, I think two meetings ago Thanks, yeah um, to just lengthen on, this just the front page yeah just the front page you know hopefully as we roll into fall we can start looking at uh, taking the other well offline we actually uh, were scheduled this Monday to have the center tank cleaned and they actually had an emergency so they were unable to show up and they have not given us a date when they will be available to come back. So was, we had good intentions to move that along right. with our storage full and it was only going to be down for a few days. It's just something that was out of our control so that center tank cleaning will be on hold. Fran, do we take we all of these or do we leave we some? We, we need, need two. two. Okay. Who sent them to the contract? Well, they have to pay. Them. Are you, Fran, are you going to take the remainder back or are yeah, we going to have no, Jim? No, okay. So we'll leave them all here? Um, is, and then you, Jim yeah, can, can come drop, pick them up. I can drop them on the way. I'm going to go through that. Okay. So I'll take two and drop them off at Jim. Whichever. Okay. Either I can get them from whatever you want to do. Okay. So okay. you want two? Two. Yep. Okay. Two. Three. Two. three. Two. Mm -hmm. he's got two. Now he's got two. <laughs> Going back to <laughs> this three. This one comes over here. Yeah. Three, three, and three. No, no, no. Those are for you. Very good. <laughs> okay, how's the finish? 2.7 million. Well, I What's add it? the 900000 to the overall outstanding debt on all the municipal water and sewer items, so there's two seven coming mm -hmm. in my internal tally. What's the approximate percentage of uh, completion now the that we have? Well, approximately. Debt, it's, uh, debt I'm you guessing have we're at 70%. Okay. Isn't that what the question is? Yeah. We've got, got, got yeah. yeah. What so, left right. original price plus change orders well, we'll total. Street, so right? we're, so yeah, good. looks like about 70%. Okay. Seven out of nine. Right. I think it's right there. Yes. Yeah. Good. The, what's the end date? What's the new end date? The, new end date? the proposed is November 28th, I believe. I believe right but that there. will be executed in change order two, so they're working on that. But that's what's going to be proposed that's in what change order coming two. Back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that change order is also the one with the change from the concrete stands to the steel stands based on location. Okay. Yep, right. and the antennas for SCADA. Right, right, that yep. were, were omitted from the first one for some reason. Yep. 
And one last thing on the water piece. Um, hopefully you will be in communication with Mark Abrahams with the uh, master plan numbers being generated that he'll have everything he needs, the possibility if your agenda permits it, maybe to come before the board two weeks from now uh, to talk about options for um, rate increase. Take a look at the agenda, see if it allows it. And if you can get his, his models done, mm -hmm. we can make that happen. If we can make it. Which is kind of what we wanted to avoid, though, was having the rate increase go into effect before the treatment plan opened up. But it was already once, so keep doing that. Are we good? Going to waste Going to waste water. water. Let's go to dirty water. Bring it. Uh, so we started with stop with the, with stop, the work stop. Stop work. So let's talk about the fact that we got authorization to start work. Good. good. Yes. <laughs> DOT. We've been battling I for hated, years. I, I really hated that interesting, um, riveting meeting. I hated leaving. You but hated I, to leave. I really had to go dig. I was like, I just, so I, you, you, you guys, you guys got this. I, I got to get out of here. So many, um, many, many meetings. Um, and we got all the approvals in place yeah. between you know, the SRF. I guess what it really took was a real deadline. June, end of the fiscal year, June 30th, if we didn't have everything in place, they were threatening right. that you were going to lose right. the principal forgiveness on your loan. So the town was going to be out like 100000 Oh. And I think DOT got that a little bit, too. When yep. We finally just started pushing. Well, so anyway, they, they, we got the master what I heard, permit. they couldn't come up with anything new. It was everything else had been kicked around. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. I'm like, why, why don't they just be like, okay? What was the holdout? They wanted to just talk about longer? I mean, they have something. Was it Mass DOT? Yeah. Um, just indecision. Indecision the big, on, the big on boss, how to do I guess, this. couldn't make the meeting. Getting it's really what I got. Yeah, the was boss that can't was, make the was meeting, somewhere yeah. else. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Um, so just a lot of moving parts out there. Everyone's nervous about being out in uh, West Main Street, Route 123. Whether it's nights or days or whatever it is, you know, you're disrupting people and they're worried about the traffic. They don't want impacts. to get yelled at. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so we finally got the permit. So we've got that. Um, we got the SRF approvals, and then thanks to everybody, we did our scramble on the 29th oh, yeah. or the 28th no, no. Yep. No. to get the contracts around. So we have all the Edelman executed. and Brady and and Belichick have no <laughs> nothing on the Weston and Sampson team. I'm coming out of a meeting. Friends, they wait for me. Like, How did you know I was here? <laughs> what, what, what's going on with this? No, nope. he's like, hey, sign this. Good fortune. Yeah. <laughs> hey, whatever it takes. So, um, thank, thank you guys. Do you need? I don't know whether you need two or three. Executed copies. I'm sure one has I to go up one. to town that, hall. I need, that's good read. <laughs> I, I, I need it. That's, you know, that's two-sided too. Burn another tree. Yeah, I'm going to read all of it. <laughs> um, <laughs> it seems like everything else you have is in there. Okay. So I have really. I have six copies. Okay. Okay. So I don't like this. If you guys want three, no, I'll leave you with three. Then you'll just you know. Like I said, I think the treasurer, the treasurer will wall either treasurer or accountant. They'll need one at town hall. You'll keep one here and whatever you want to do with the third. We'll forward one to the contractors. The other thing is we have to issue the notice to proceed, yeah. and I saw that you have that there. I do have that, yeah. So I emailed it to you to put on for the letterhead. To take a look at. I think that's before they went down site. Um, <laughs> technically, but they have a signed contract. Um, so yeah, I mean that's why we got it. So they've been out doing out. test pits. Oh, You're right. So. There's a formality. Yeah. 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 Um, do we have to vote on this? Or this is just I don't think so because you already voted already to a war. It, so it's a sign? Yeah. So I can take. No, all of us sign it? Or just no, just, just uh, okay, great. on behalf of okay. you guys. Um, so I'll get this to Rockio because they need to sign they it. Sign and I'll get you a copy of this sign, but then when I have the other signature, yeah, that's fine. Um, we'll get that back. Yeah. So that's that's that. I also have uh, the wastewater annual agreement, the same thing that Barbara just went through. I did not send this ahead of time, so no one has had a chance to look at it. If you guys want to talk about it tonight, that's fine, or if you want to deal with this at the next meeting. It's basically the same agreement that you just looked at for the water, but this is to deal with wastewater-related stuff. Um, it's that the same annual same It's what we do every year. It's okay. the same one we do every year at the beginning of the fiscal year. So the fiscal year just ended. So 
um, this is our contract for going forward. So okay. let's do it. Okay. So I have uh, three copies of it here. Okay, to get everything, the, the rate chart is the same as Barbara's. The format is all the same as it is every year. This one at five bucks too. Yep. Can you get a cup of coffee for that? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, just, initial just the back probably. The very back. Yeah, the last the last page. It's not the same. And I think so. We have um, just to bring the commission up to speed. We have uh, Greg Pye on to start overseeing the construction. He's going to oversee the work out at Wheaton. Greg was here for the town center sewer project. Right. Um, at that time, he was working for Weston and Samson. Uh, Greg has retired. Uh, and they um, are WBE, because um, we have to meet our M and WBE requirements. Um, they've actually hired Greg to do the work. Um, to do the oversight. So we'll be able to meet our WB commitment and have some consistency from before. Greg knows all the people over at Wheaton and all the uh, the challenges that, that, uh, that that work over their faces. Yeah. So uh, just so you guys know. And then once they get out onto the highway, um, we'll have someone else. Uh, we have to meet our MBE also. So, and then we'll have someone from Weston and Samson at some point. But for starters, all the work on Wheaton, um, Greg is going to be out there. And we know that, that's where they're starting. They are still entertaining, this the back to you um, trying to bring oh, a second yep. crew out Thank you. and jump out onto 123, yes. um, as was discussed at the yeah, meeting. So there's DOT. no stop work order there, right? The, no. The, the no. state road is yep. all marked up, I saw. Yep. It's just that they need, the permit is for night work. The intent to get out there in the summer is to get permission to do some work during the day before school starts. One of the biggest issues with work on 123 is is all the bus traffic and just the impacts to the right. uh, to the students. So it's everyone's advantage if we can get some work done here during the summer. So they they are going to try and mobilize a second crew uh, and at least get some work done. And then once school starts, everything will go to nights. What time is starting when the network is going to be? 9 to 5. 9 p.m. Okay. Yeah, so it's 9 p.m. It's to 5 a.m. Um, and that's what I have. And I know um, you want to talk about the... Uh, I think it's... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you need one, right? One more time. There's one. That's for you. The ball that you guys talked about and this deals with West Main Street sewer project um, and uh, just to bring you back to what was going on project wise we went out to bid first to figure out what the costs were and then followed up with a town meeting vote um, and obviously the town the town's people voted for the project to make it go forward um, but one of the also somewhat fortuitous things that happened is that between the time we opened bids and then going to town meeting um, we had approached the um, actually DHCD, who's the funding agency that's putting money behind right. yep. the Northern Housing Authority, and basically told them that this project was maybe risky at best given the, the, the high cost of the project. Um, and they very quickly, within basically a day or two, uh, came forward and increased um, the amount that they were paid. Uh, is the housing authority's share of this project from one million one hundred forty-one thousand to one million five hundred seventy-eight thousand? So, with regard to that, we really need an amendment to that connection agreement. I have drafted it. Um, there are two pieces uh, to this amendment. One is that change, and it appears twice in the connection agreement. Um, and, and this actually came as a result of an um, email. Uh, that was received here uh, to the actual department on May 15th, uh, adding to the amount of money that the Housing Authority was going to be putting in. And basically, it's not their money, it's the state's money, the UCD. The second part is that the original agreement called for them to pay 
um, their their connection the fee right. of two hundred thirty eight thousand five hundred or I, I'm a little dyslexic two thirty five eight um, um, upon start of construction. Well, construction started, so we need to give them a little bit of time to pay that bill. So there's two pieces. One is a change in the dollar amount and of the, the fee or the amount of money they're paying is their share of construction. And the other one is change the timing on their payment of the, con of the connection fee. And what I basically said that, that this now amendment calls for them to pay within 30 days of receipt of a bill from you folks. So, so I've prepared this, not a lawyer. It follows the same format as the first amendment that was done. I'm not sure if you want to run this by Joe Cove or if you want to take care of it. Um, if it's, there's no changes other than a line about the money, the money and a line about the time. And the time, that's it. Everything else is the same. It just um, changes the numbers. And punctuation, you didn't sneak in an extra <laughs> semicolon or something in this game. Which, come on now. I know I know your sense of humor. I have my, <laughs> oh, well, well, you're checking. Oh, wait, wait. Here's my comment. <laughs> what does this mean? <laughs> and he explained it to me. Yeah. No, no, I, I looked at it. Yeah. Yeah, so, I, he didn't sneak anything in there. Uh, so once again, the, the, that fee was supposed to be paid upon right. the contract, the construction so starting. It's and we can't really say, okay, pay us now because it's started. Right. So really to formalize both things. So. Um, that's it. Is this no new motion? Because this is really just what we've talked about before. I or would just, just say motion. that signatures just, just vote to sign the amendment. Okay. To pass it on to the housing authority. <laughs> so I make a motion to accept the changes made to the second amendment to the protection agreement for the Northern Housing Authority West Main Street project. I second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Sal Luke. Okay. Okay. Pressure. Great. 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 with you. Um, we are waiting for the mapping from Frank Sullivan on where the last round of two-inch wells have been installed. We have all the logs. We just don't have the location. So. There was. What's called the soil? I know we've been saying this every week. No, I don't know. It's tight. It's tight. Yeah, yeah. Units. Yeah. 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 Yeah
think they maybe the first one might take a while. Priming the and, pump is slow. And then when they you know and they get a routine, then that's and then the requisition comes in, it goes. That's good though. That the town will have less to pay though. Overall, because when exactly. we met with it right before town meeting, we thought they wouldn't pay anything once we agreed to go forward with the projects. And the fact that they're doing four hundred grand is pretty good. So it's a very good thing. Yeah. Wastewater all done? I believe so. Yes. I have a small um, issue. I've, it's been brought to my attention that um, certain uh, users of our uh, famous free water machine have experienced um, a somewhat uh, less than totally clean appearance of the machine. And um, really just want to reiterate um, any complaints, problems, issues, compliments, if you will. Um, could come to the department. Um, uh, our phone numbers are the same. Um, you can you can reach out to the department. The department get any appropriate person, and uh, solutions can be reached much more quickly than a roundabout manner of um, social media bashing of anything that happens. Um, we will continue the free water machine as it is a very very good um, source of clean water for um, anybody who cares to go and get it. But um, criticisms and uh, bashing on social media is not the way to get things accomplished. Reach out to the people who actually influence the maintenance and support that machine and you will be satisfied. Everyone's a fairly contractor. So um, once, once I was um, aware of the situation, I called. There was someone on site within the hour. One hour. It's not bad. <laughs> that's, not, that's not bad. But people are just somewhat, somewhat silly. Anything else? Um, you mind? Us or you? Absolutely. Mind if I? No. It's so I can just, just where, please where just present him with your yeah. name, and uh, so we can, yeah. for the record, please. Daniel Uchar, C O U T U R E. Village Fund Building Association. I'm president of the board. So, listening to the folks from the cottage today, say, wow, they, they have some similarities to our situation, except. They already received the bill a long time ago, but they're not happy with it. Um, we're a little upset with what we think is our bill is going to be uh, for betterment uh, on, the, on the units. And let me just explain to you a little bit about our two buildings. Uh, and we have two buildings, six units each, all townhouses, and two bedrooms. They are under Title V to be two-bedroom units. We have never expanded those. And we've always discouraged you know, anybody who had a thought to, to, to expand that. We have, we kind of break down our units in uh, three, three units uh, together. So if, if you look at those buildings, the two, let's t just say one building at a time, six units, right? The two end units are a little bit larger than the two that are in, in on the inside, and they're set back a little bit from from the uh, the line where the uh, auto buildings are. And so when we divide them into three, it's one outer and two inside units. All right. Yep. Now these buildings were built in '85 and '86, or '84, '85. I forget exactly. And so that's well over the 30 years that you would expect. Uh, to, for a septic system to survive, and uh, and we've done that with 1,500 gallon tanks, four of them. Again, one tank for every three units. Okay, and we've survived very well. As a matter of fact, I had uh, somebody come in and uh, do a little pumping today, and a little investigation because we had an issue where. Um, Two units on one system had uh, received some backwater, okay, and what 
what it turned out is that the filter had plugged up and then it popped. Okay, when it popped, it actually allowed all the water to recede, and we haven't had a problem in about five years. So days, they have Zabel filters on the outlet, is what you're saying? Yeah. All right. right you know, right, right yep. in the tank. Okay, so... Uh, tank outlet. Yeah, but, I mean, the, the good part about that was once I had them in, I said, okay, I want you to take a look at a few things. And we, we looked at the, the tanks there uh, and the uh, leash bits. It's kind of funny... Um, the building that I'm in, which is 85, which means it's the closest over one to town, that uh, that one has three uh, four foot diameter pits, or four foot deep pits, I guess, um, attached to each septic tank. The other building has four smaller ones attached to each, whatever that's worth. And the, um, the map from the uh, uh, BOH is, uh, uh, you know, shows, shows that pretty definitively. What they don't show very well is exactly how the piping runs from the house or from the each unit into the particular septic systems. We, so that's, that's a mystery we're going to have to solve. The only thing we know is that the, it, each building, the pipes uh, shoot out of the building, not inside. We don't share. Right. No, it's, it's traditionally done in a, uh, a Y scenario prior to the tank. So they, everybody, like you said, um, it, often deals with plumbing codes, believe it or not. It's plumbing codes has jurisdiction within 10 feet of the building. Yeah. So usually there's a, a length of 10 foot pipe, sometimes only four feet of it, sometimes six feet of it protrudes from the building and then they either turn and then Y into whatever. The well, we did notice that the outside units have a direct line into the tank and the two inside units seem to be merged somewhere. They do come together and into the tank. So two so, entrances to the tank? Yeah. I okay. For three units. That's crazy. Yeah, I know. That was a surprise. <laughs> that's that's I crazy. I never really uh, had examined it. They're racing. Yeah. But the, you know, one of the things, though, is that at, at, and, you know, we've been doing our tidal files every three years to stay up to date. And uh, we've been passing it with, uh, um, you know, with good colors for all that time, and including now. Although we, we did, in fact, um, have a conditional situation this time on one of the tanks, actually one of the D boxes, because we had replaced them all in the last, well, from 2016 on back. We did one, uh, again, four tanks, so we did one every year because they were starting to crumble. Right. So we decided to, to get those fixed. But it looks like the last one um, uh, sank a little bit, so now you, you weren't getting. Um, you know, everything to the leach pits because one of them at least was kind of running uphill. So we're getting that repaired by the my person who did that work uh, uh, you know, at his cost because we feel that it should have been done correctly. But that's the point is though, at the same time, we, we were looking at two different tanks and doing a little examination. And when you look at the, 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 the pits, they're all dry, beautifully dry. I mean, you don't have to be a, much of a scientist to understand that these, these systems are still very good. Right. So it's very painful for us, even though we've been preparing for this change for a long time. We knew it was coming. We've always said, you know, really it's a, it's a benefit to our property values to have town sewer, you know, even though it's going to cost us more, uh, even the uses costs. We understand all that. But we've always figured that uh, let, me, let me just say one other thing. Those, so those three units per tank with pipes leading to a central area, which would lead you to say that the easiest way to connect to the town would be to have four laterals, right? Maybe two. You might be able to say, okay, we'll combine the two in one building and out to, out to the street. But we've always thought that, I mean, that the, the chances are we wanted to have four laterals up to the street. And we're fine with that. We were willing to pay for that, no problem. But the other thing I was going to say is that we have about 420 feet of footage. When you look at different ways that you might price tie-ins like this, one of them typically in the past, I'm not saying in this town, but in other places, certainly, has been by frontage. Well, you take 420 and you divide that 
by four because we really have four subsets, right? Three units each. That's only 105 feet each. If you look on West Main Street, more than half of the properties have more frontage than that. But here's another thing. We are, um, we, we are uh, cornered, so to say. We can't expand. We can't expand to the back because we have conservation land and water. We can't go to the front. We need parking space and then we're on the road. So our units are not going to get any larger. At least, in fact, more than now. I saw one, there's one lot a little closer to town on the other side of the street that's 80 feet wide or 80 foot frontage. But man, they've got land, good land going back. I mean, they could expand a great deal. We can't expand. We, we're not adding bathrooms. We're not adding rooms. And for a long time now, we've been averaging two or less um, residents per unit. So we're saying, how come in our situation, we're getting hit with 16 times 12, 192,000? You just told me that the connection fee for the uh, senior housing is 238.5. For how many units? Even if they're but one bedroom, how many units in there? All right, it's, it's a bedroom count. It's the same, it's the same, it's the same factor. It can be. It can be. It's a separate agreement. And, um, well, I understand that. It is a separate but we understand. And, uh, and they're both set up based on the town's rules and regulations. So effectively, what's happening here is that they are contributing not 235000 They're contributing, you know. A million and a half well, dollars. Five okay. million. Okay. Hey, well, I'll tell you why. Because if you, if you come up with the other million and a half, we, we can forgive the, <laughs> the 192 right now, today. <laughs> I, we, can do, we can make that happen. Otherwise, it's, you, you know the rule. A, a, a dwelling unit is a tie-in fee. That's, that's pretty much where it is. And you have, uh, you know... That, you, but that's not true. Okay. I mean, you've got apartments that you're giving them uh, one line per building. I know you have. These are separately owned units that you so have. So what's right? the difference? So if we decide to sell this to somebody else, to, so there's one owner and we decide to rent then the formula changes. I'm, I'm just looking for a practical, realistic solution. The people that we have in our units are not wealthy people that right. come up no, with 192000 which is what the full amount is for, for that. It, it, it just is not reasonable. And, and we're just looking for a break. We're not looking you know, to bankrupt the town or anything like that. We've been good citizens and we continue to want to be. And, you know, the prevailing feeling, it's not 100% right now, but the prevailing feeling has been that, uh, you know, we want to tie in early, which means, you know, those uses, charges, which if we just use minimum, that comes out to about $4,150 a year. Uh, and, you know, I know there's some people, maybe as many as half in, a, in, a, in our complex, that would pay the 16000 up front. Okay. But I'll tell you right now, I'm not going to be fostering that idea if we, we can't get some sort of break on this. I mean, that's, that it's just doesn't make any sense for us to do that. People have to be able to survive. I already have one person who's decided they can't handle it. And they don't even know about all the costs yet. Right. You know, it's, it's, it's just something not right. And I want to know how to go about to correct it. And, uh, you know, I, we have been, it was tempting at our meeting on, on, on your meeting, June, June 11th, to speak up strongly. Because obviously for us it's, it's an emotional kind of thing. Because it's nowhere near what, what we had planned for. Um, but we we want to be good citizens. We want to cooperate. We we didn't want to make a stink at that meeting and make it some sort of a chaotic meeting or anything with people shouting at each other. We didn't want that, and we continue to not want that. But you know, at some point we we're we're, we're going to be forced into having to make some sort of a case out of this 
whether we go political or not, or what media, however. Well, be, be that Believe me, we have the skilled people to do that, right. but I mean, that's not what we want. Right, and I will, I will caution you in that you're not the first person to sit here and, and threaten us with some sort of action, and yeah. there's nothing really we can do on that. Um, what we have in place um, is a uh, is it a 20-year? I think we're, we're working on the betterments for a 20-year payment plan. Uh, I know every, everybody's at a different point in the spectrum. Mm -hmm. um, as soon as we finished um, our public meeting a month, six weeks ago now, I, I don't remember when, but it was, it was not too long ago, um, three people um, came up, and, and one commercial customer and, and a couple uh, residential customers, I've been waiting for this. Thank, thank goodness you got this through. And you have the other end of the spectrum where I can't believe you're doing this. I just spent a, bu a boatload of money on a septic system. So nobody's ever really going to be in a, in a perfect situation, and you people are not in a perfect situation. What we have to alleviate some of the pain, not all of the pain, is time. You, you use the, the portion of your tax payment to pay the betterment over 20 years. That's not that bad. I will, I will also float the idea out if you had a septic issue and you had to replace that septic system for those units and you, you would have to, you would have to de understand. deal with the bank and so on and so forth and it would be, you know, a 20 year thing and I don't, I'm, I can't say what for sure whether it's a $190,000 septic system but it would not be a $20,000 septic system right. and uh, I understand your frustration but what we're, what we're doing for our community is um, picking up all the wastewater from each of those units, making our groundwater more clear, and getting our sewers to the further reaches that much down the road at, with the assistance from the state in the housing authorities complex. Were it not for them, the, the cost per unit would be much higher. I'm not saying you can rejoice about that. I'm just saying it could be worse. So we have time. Well, no, we have time. It never would have gotten off the ground. Let's face it. You know, I, I don't have a crystal ball. Maybe. I, know, I know. I know people <coughs> are very, very receptive to this, not only for the housing authority, but for the schools. So we're receptive yeah. to it too, but it just the numbers don't have that up to fairness. They just don't. Um, I don't want to get into a whole long thing, but what do you sell a, a condominium for? What is what is one of those what does one of those in dwelling units go for? Well, it might have been a couple hundred thousand, but it ain't going to be that anymore. People are going to be losing some big money. Yeah. I, I, you know, I, I mean, big percentage to their net worth, and it's just. What, what did, do you know? What the last one traded for? Like two hundred five. Two hundred five. So they're pretty much. The cost of a smallish house in town. You're not going to buy a house for 205 in Norton. You know that. I've lived here 20 years. It's there not, are. I sold my house and bought this house. There's no way. There are there are some dwellings over in the Grove that do trade for, just over that. A, a smallish a smallish house. I'm not saying. But you take 20,000 yeah. off that as if you try to sell. That's yeah. 20,000 of your profit. You have to pay up front. The town is going to lean on you until you, you have to pay it, that right. person. Right, at and the then sale. You have, and then you have the payment of the tie-in cost just from us to tie in there. That's another ten fifteen thousand dollars $15,000. So now the $40,000 profit you had is down to less than ten because you got the selling of that and your um, you know the real estate fees and everything else. You're not right. making a profit. Yep. So how can someone move? just even think about moving. A lot of these people have been there for 20 years. There's a few of us only been there less than four. Right. No, not even. I think there's two of us out of the six. Everybody else has been there at least 15, 20 years. And for these older people too, this is ridiculous. It's so hard to justify that amount of money. And I understand the housing authority is getting money, but they're getting grants and state funds and everything else too. I understand they're putting money in, but they're getting all this other stuff. We don't qualify for that stuff. And we're considered a commercial versus the residential people who do choose to sign, you know, they don't have to tie in the residentials. Right. They, Everybody's, it's a choice. Everybody has to tie in within five years. Yes, but it's a choice. 
and it, it's just it's hard to justify all that money, and especially when you have these smaller units compared to all the other residentials there, they're at least, you know, $100,000 more or more, and they're all paying the same amount. And then there's vacant lots that are a percentage, but then, I mean... I think a, a vacant lot gets assessed as, or gets a betterment as one dwelling unit, as long as it's a single family lot. Yeah, my, it, it was explained a little differently last time, I thought, that they get less. No, it's a, a unit is a unit is a unit, and unfortunately, a, a condo unit is a separately owned individual unit. I don't, I don't, I mean, I, I'm not, yeah. I'm, I not just, I just, I, I'm not happy about it. It's there's always um, some people who are in the in the bad part of the equation, and I'm, I can't I can't soften that. I understand. Um, I guess the, to justify a sixteen thousand dollar six foot pipe, <laughs> literally sticking out of the ground for us to tie into. Right. Well. Yeah, Obviously, it's the whole system that you're buying into and the rest of it, extending the main and hopefully uh, connecting the rest of the town. And it's, it's a definitely a big picture view of things, but uh, I can only reiterate if, um, if you had to replace your septic system I at, some, at yeah, some time. At my house right. I sold it. Yep. Mass Title V, right? Mm -hmm. So you know about that and if it were for the whole condo project it would be a quite a number and that's that's what would kind of yeah, struck. It's, it's hard to justify it all. I don't think our EDU policy is different than other towns in the state but in the same situation, right? So pretty much I think it's pretty much standard with other towns in the area. It's just unfortunate that you guys fall on that. Yeah, it's very rare that um, um, betterment assessments uh, Done by frontage anymore. If it is there, but it might be one out of 50. So the unit rule is pretty much universally used these days, it has been for probably the last 20 years. Um, and, you know, one unit is an EDU, um, and the definition is a single family unit. So it's that's how it's defined. The, um, one of the things that is, is out there, and I know the commission fully intends to do this, is that um, the state uh, septic tax credit. Uh, so also applies to sewer connections. And one of the things that, that this commission is going to be looking to do is work with the Board of Health so that they can actually um, make you folks and everybody eligible to get um, a mass state tax credit back uh, for hopefully including the cost of the assessment and part. Um, and um, we really haven't talked about that with the commission yet. But we obviously, it's part of the, what we intend to do, it's time to do that because we're just studying the construction. The veteran assessments won't be placed um, until the end of construction when the system's right. ready to be used. It's a, it's a year. Um, the, this commission I know has talked about one thing is that as the end of the year. No, you're saying to the end of the year? It's a, it's a calendar year. Their, their project rate right, goes all the way to next yeah, spring. Last right. time at the June meeting we talked about April. Thing. Whenever, whenever yeah, they could be ready. They could be ready. The system might be ready. They'll have to do final paving still right. in right. the spring next yeah. year. So for ready for you. So, so the bottom line is that it's time to get that this work done um, when that tie-in is under the law. Um, and I'm not sure it was done for one account. That was last time that the town assessed betterments. They could assess, you know, as soon as this contract is signed, and basically do half of the cost um, of the betterment right away. Rather than do that, the commission. Informally, has talked about we're not going to do it until people are ready to tie in. Um, so there's some things that can be done. The septic tank or septic tax credit is one, and and, and handing out the forms and letting people know what they can do and what you do. Um, and I think the only thing this commission is do, can do is talk to Board of Health of basically getting the sign off from them that would allow you to do that. And I believe, I think it's as much as six thousand dollars over four years um, but again it's a septic it's a tax credit mm -hmm. come off the mass so it's something you know assuming, you, assuming you're paying Massachusetts taxes um, you have taxes to pay then like I said it's I think it's fifteen hundred dollars a year for four years so that is something that can come right off the top assuming you can put all that paperwork together so there is in fact a way to, to try to Alleviate some of the costs. Definitely like to look into that. 
Yeah. We should I talk about that more. Information. Can you uh, keep us informed of that progress? Absolutely. Well, I'll provide the information at the next commission meeting anyway, or even before then. And if you leave your name or address or whatever, we can get that to you. Okay. We can do that. The other thing that the commission is also, again, all informally, because there's certain votes that have to be taken, is the interest rate that gets charged. Um, one of the things that uh, when the betterments were charged to win a comment, um, the town got a 2% loan from the state, just like this. Um, and what the town had to do was, believe it or not, they were, they were very limited by the state law, which did not been changed. So the interest rate that was charged for folks that tied in the sewer, they were cut it, 4% interest per year, uh, <coughs> remaining, remaining balance. The, right now, the state law has been changed. It says they can charge um, up to 2%. So I know the commission has been talking about, you know, you know, rather than paying or charging 4 Two and a half percent is a really good interest rate. I don't think you're going to get that anywhere, on any loan anywhere. So I know the commission's talked about doing that as well. So the commission's not unsympathetic to um, or to you folks and, and everybody else for that matter, and what the costs are going to be. So there are some things this commission is again formal votes would have to be taken, uh, but they're following their own rules and regulations on how to assess betterments and the procedures and the mechanisms to try to make this palatable to everybody as they possibly can. Okay, so that's it then? I mean, uh, we have no higher authority that we can go to to discuss this further with any results. This is the board. Yeah. It's not okay, but at least I'm happy with what you said is in the right direction for us. Appreciate that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for coming. We'll, we'll keep you posted of the progress on the exact interest rate and the other items. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Set the next meeting. What is this? Nine? So nine, 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 nine and fourteen. Third. <laughs> twenty-three. Still on day. So it's seven twenty-three. Everybody cool with the twenty-third? Yes, sir. Mr. Yes, sir. Bishop. Motion to adjourn. Second. Boom. Boom. <laughs>